since uh, the last few lectures, we have been looking at the various aspects of dyes and their toxicity, their degradation product and therefore, we have come to a conclusion that slowly and steadily the use of natural dyes is much safer and it is also that it is now made available many new sources have come up and therefore, there should be some very good methods of extraction. So, that most of the dye content can be extracted from the plant material, because this was one of the drawbacks in the earlier stages of extraction that many a times the plant material still retain the colorant and the colorant natural dyes were not fully extracted. So, to overcome all those um, you know factors that how to extract most efficiently in cheap manner and most effectively retaining the color property is a big challenge and research has really progressed in this area as you will see as we go along this lecture that the extraction process has really taken up uh, a very advanced level. And so, we now try to look at the various methods of extraction of natural dyes. <coughs> methods of dye extraction, experimental trials were carried out in domestic gardens in collaboration with botanists mainly focusing on the best condition for the growth of the dye plant in regard to soil and climatic factors. Modern cultivation system for getting maximum dye yield including optimal seeding and harvesting time, optimal fertilization procedures were adapted. The utilization uh, or utilizable plant parts were subjected to specific dehydration processes or the dye stuff was extracted as per the given strategy. So, how it happened? It, it all started with a domestic garden uh, growing the plant and with the in collaboration with botanists how to grow a, a plant more healthily and all that was taken care into uh, the consideration and these factors help to grow a very healthy plant. Now, if the plant is healthy obviously, the flora of the plant also will be or the flower will be very healthy, the fruits will be very healthy, the leaves and stem and root and other parts of the plant will be very healthy. So, it was expected that by proper utilization of fertilization and by taking into account the modern cultivation system, plant organized farming of such dye yielding plants can be carried out very efficiently. Now, once that is been carried out, then by the means of this following strategy, the plant can be extracted. That means, the plant can either be used as a dried plant, that means the plant part will be first dried in oven and then the colorant will be extracted or the plant can be used fresh. Both can be subjected to extraction in of course, separate uh, systems. Then during the extraction, there can be an alcoholic extraction, any other solvent extraction or water extraction which is also known as aqueous extraction. So, three types of uh, extractions are possible. One is the methanolic extraction, the second one is that any other solvent like hexane or uh, acetone or ethyl acetate can be used and the third one is the water extraction which is the conventional method of extraction. Now, from these extractants of the alcoholic type and any other solvent type, the solvent can be evaporated on rotary evaporator. And solid extract or semi solid extract or pasty extract can be obtained. 
Similarly, from the aqueous extract, liquid dyes can be extracted by removal of water. So, by gradual removal of water, it can be uh, concentrated and then the solid extract can be further fractionated and pass through column chromatography as what we learnt yesterday that column chromatography not only helps in identification of the compound, but it also helps in the separation of various dyes that may be present together. As I mentioned yesterday also, I want to repeat once more that natural dyes always occur in two, three or four types of similar structurally uh, matching uh, similar compounds. So, therefore, they need to be separated and the best method for separation of such similar compounds is by column chromatography. So, thus pure dye can be obtained. So, both from the dye, dried par, plant part, be it flower, be it fruit, be it leaves, be it stem, be it bark or roots, all these parts of natural plants can be used for extracting dye if they have any special colorant. Second thing is both dried plant part or fresh plant part either can be used and three types of extractions are possible. One is with methanol because methanol is considered to be a very good solvent for all types of polar, non-polar dye co uh, content of the plant part. But other solvents also can play a very good role. For example, colors which are non-polar can be extracted in hexane. Colors which are polar can be extracted in ethyl acetate or acetone. So, you see that depending on the polarity of the compound and the polarity is decided by the fact that how many OH groups or how many such uh, you know polar groups are attached as oxochromes to the molecule. Now, aqueous extract of course, has been one of the most traditional conventional method and from time and again it has been a foolproof method. But the only problem with uh, the aqueous method is that it requires very long hours of extraction and some of the dyes which are heat sensitive may get decolorized or discolored. There are two different words, decolorize means it may lose its color completely or discolor means from a bright nice color it may get converted to a very dull uh, bad looking color. So, this is the basic strategy that is followed for the extraction of dyes. Traditional method, the traditional method used to extract dye stuff from all other plant mentioned earlier were the plant material where the plant material is added directly to the dye bath. This has been used by dyers for centuries and is still used by many dyers in northeastern states of India. So, this is a traditional method by just aqueous uh, extraction. However, this method has several disadvantages. Why I mention northeastern state of uh, states of India? Because still there are pockets of various groups where natural dyeing is being practiced in Manipur, in Nagaland, in uh, many other northeastern Arunachal Pradesh and so on. The disadvantages of this method are that the plant material has to be separated from the textile. It is not possible uh, to modern textile fabrication machines because the uh, pumps and the spinnerets will be choked. Hard plant material such as madder roots or barks of casea, amla are difficult to extract. A low density of dried material requires high processing volume. Disadvantage has to be solved for use by modern mills. For industrial use, the best method is to provide extracts. Aqueous extracts are not especially favorable for dye plants such as Pakia, Alkanet, Tulsi 
where we have to use 50 percent of 50 50 water methanol extract for dyeing. The reason being that flavonoids, anthroquinones and A glycons are poorly soluble in water therefore, are extracted only partially. So, you see that when traditional method was that the fabric, the plant and everything was put in one dye bath and it was just simply heated. Now, sometimes when the dye is not very soluble in water, there will be a problem that uh, you know it will not solubilize in water. Then in such a case like for example, the uh, parkia dye, dye from parkia plant or dye from alkanet plant or dye, dye from tulsi plant balsam, bal, uh, osmi, osimum is very, very uh, you know in a state where it can only be dissolved in methanol and such a plant cannot uh, show very good method of extraction by the traditional method and therefore, methanol has to be added 50 percent. Now, all this plus if the plant parts are very hard, they cannot, they will um, interfere with the modern machinery and therefore, there can be a choking. So, there that is the reason why traditional method is not very feasible anymore with the modern technology. Innovative methods of extraction of dyes. Efficient extraction of dye from the plant material is important for standardi standardization and optimization of natural dyes or vegetable dyes. So, the it, we come to a conclusion that the traditional method is not the best method and therefore, there are always possibilities of not being able to extract the entire amount of colorant. As it is the plants have only 2 to 10 percent dye, very rarely 10 percent, it is between 2 to 5 percent mostly and out of that also if the dye is not extracted properly, it would mean that there is a loss of colorant in the waste material. And so, efficient method of modern extraction methods that were devised are soxalate, supercritical fluid extraction, subcritical water extraction and sonicator methods. So, these were the four methods which were popularly or which have been popularly used in the extraction of natural dyes of which soxalate is the most popular one. Why? Because every, every laboratory can afford a soxalate machine. I will show you as we go along how does the soxalate machine look like. The second one is supercritical fluid extraction which is also referred as SCFE. Now, supercritical fluid extraction machine is very expensive and because it is a one time investment, it is kind of very hard to uh, you know uh, procure this machine. But once it can be procured, it is one of the best techniques which can recover different types of plant um, chemicals such as or uh, phytochemicals which can be of diff different use to different industries. So, you can see that this machine can not only yield dye but it can also yield essential oils, it can give various types of other fragrance products and so on and so forth. Subcritical water extraction is another new technology. As we go along, we will try to learn more about it. It is a kind of a uh, superheated water where water can be become a very good extractant. And the fourth method is the sonicator method where ultrasound energy is being used for the extraction purpose. Now, this is how the soxalate looks like. You see there is a round bottom flask, then there is a vessel where the plant material is wrapped up in filter paper and there is a distillation head where the distillation takes place and for almost 8 hours this cycle goes on. 
till all the color is actually collected in the round bottom flask. The round bottom flask is heated from beneath by a heating mantle. So, this is what the oxalate looks like. When a compound of low solubility needs to be extracted from a solid mixture, a, a oxalate extraction can be carried out. So, that means solid plant material can be wrapped up and with the help of an appropriate solvent, the solid uh, extractant can be uh, or the dye can be extracted. The technique places a specialized piece of glassware in between a flask and a condenser. The refluxing solvent repeatedly washes the solid extracting the desired compound into the flask. Soxlate extraction was carried out for colorant identification. In this work, dried plant parts were put into the thistle of the soxlate extractor and methanol was used as a solvent. Temperature of the instrument was maintained well under boiling point of the used solvent. Several cycles of solvents were run so as to extract all the compounds from the plant parts. So, you see that the choice of solvent in the case of soxalate is popularly methanol, first thing. Second thing is repeated cycle need to be done because it is not possible to extract the entire amount of colorant in one cycle. Therefore, it requires almost 4 to 8 hours for the solvent to go on refluxing and then condensing and every time the solvent is condensing, it is washing through that filter paper and back into the round bottom flask. So, that is how the process is slow, but it is very efficient and is most popularly used in every laboratory where natural dye extraction is being carried out. Now, another thing that I would like to point out that it is very cheap and it is affordable. So, therefore, one would find a soxlate extractor in every laboratory. Now, supercritical extractor, this is how it looks and there is this liquefied carbon dioxide which is popularly used uh, for, the, for the extraction of the colorant. Sometimes, some entrainers are uh, added as a solvent like ethyl acetate to facilitate the solubility of the colorant. Now, because of the rarefraction of carbon dioxide and liquefaction of carbon dioxide, it adds on a property to the liquid carbon dioxide to be a good solvent. Now, this is a new concept altogether. Why? Because you have always known carbon dioxide as a gas. Now, how would you imagine that this can happen? You also can recall the gas laws that you have learnt in your 12th standard that gases can be compressed and at one particular point of temperature and pressure, the gases can be converted into liquid. Now, this is the critical temperature and the pressure at which a ga gaseous material can be liquefied. Now, when it is rarefied, again the release of pressure can bring them back to the gaseous state. So, this is the fundamental that is adapted in supercritical extractor. If I show you the flow diagram, you will be able to understand the you know working. Now, supercritical extractor here is a regulation valve, there is heat exchanger, there is separator, there is gas uh, exchange, then there is a condenser which passes liquefied carbon dioxide and through the extractant, it then pumps uh, back the carbon dioxide into the system. So, you see that all the carbon dioxide is liquefied, rarefied, liquefied, rarefied and it is recycled. There is very minimum loss of carbon dioxide, but nevertheless it acts as a solvent very efficiently. What it does in the liquefied state, it takes away the uh, colorant from the plant material and then it, when it is rarefied, it uh, emits out the uh, plant material extractant. So, therefore, uh, the uh, carbon dioxide in the gaseous state is recycled 
and the plant extractant is collected. Now, you will also understand that at different temperature and pressure, when the uh, supercritical extractor is set at a different temperature and pressure, it can then be uh, very befitting for extracting steroids from the plants. Another parameter can be set up where only terpenoids can be extracted. So, you see from the same plant material which is fed into the uh, supercritical extractor, many, many value addition products can be extracted by simply changing the parameters of the critical temperature and pressure and by using a different entrainers with the carbon dioxide gas. Supercritical fluid extraction or SCFE is a two step process which uses a dense gas as solvent usually carbon dioxide above its critical temperature that is 31 degree centigrade and critical pressure which is 74 bar for extraction. The natural product is powdered and charged into the extractor. Carbon dioxide is fed to the extractor through a high pressure pump that is working at 100 to 350 bar. The extract charged carbon dioxide is sent to the separator which is at a pressure 60 to 120 bar via a pressure reduction valve. At reduced temperature and pressure conditions, the extract precipitates out in the separator. The extract free carbon dioxide stream is introduced several times for effective extraction of all the dye material from the natural product. Why SEFE is superior over the traditional solvent extraction of natural dyes? Now, one would wonder that why is it that uh, there was a need for SEFE at all? Why? Because it is one of the best method and as I told you that nothing is wasted. From the same plant material, various other important phytochemicals can also be extracted after the extraction of the dye. And at a particular parameter, which is the critical temperature and pressure uh, above the critical temperature and pressure, when these temperatures and pressures are altered, different materials will come out differently. So, there is no necessity for even doing any column chromatography. As what we saw in the soxlate extraction, we always get a crude mixture. But in the case of supercritical fluid extraction, the purity of the compound is assured. Firstly, it uses a clean, safe, inexpensive, non-inflammable, non-toxic, environmentally friendly, non-polluting solvent carbon dioxide. Now, you see all other solvents that are used in Soxalate extraction, be it methanol, be it acetone, be it ethyl acetate or any other aromatic uh, solvents are always uh, considered to be non-eco-friendly. And therefore, this particular method has certainly many superiority points as compared to the Soxalate met, uh, method. Secondly, the energy costs associated with SEFE are lower than the conventional techniques. Because of the quick extraction process, the energy required for pumping the carbon dioxide is much faster. One can complete the cycle of passing through uh, the plant material, the liquefied carbon dioxide and then rarifying it and in a much faster manner and maybe within half an hour the job is done. Whereas, as I told you in soxlate extraction, it is always like 4 to 8 hours and that much amount of heating is required continuously. So, therefore, it is also you know not only energy uh, uh, saving, time saving, but the machine has a one time cost, no doubt about it because of its specialized pressure equipment. Now, looking at the subcritical extractor, subcritical water extractor, this is how the layout looks like. It has a pump that is controlling the temperature and then it also has a, 
uh, an exhaust through which the extraction takes place. There is a feed pump then into the extractor, there is uh, uh, you know uh, a very specialized kind of arrangement where superheated water can be passed through the extractant. Normally, water has a temperature of 100 degrees. Now, we are talking about temperatures which are much above that. This is the graphical subcritical water extractant. There is a pre coiled, pre heating coil and extraction cell, and therefore, it is uh, you know, water is uh, through an HPLC pump is pumped into the oven, and it is the heating uh, is facilitated by the uh, uh, heating coil and therefore, the temperature uh, of the pumped water is kept above 100 degrees and this gaseous water is a very good um, or I would say you know something which is in the in between the stage of gaseous and liquid water is a good extractant. Subcritical water extraction. Subcritical water extraction was performed with some plants to extract natural colorants. It is not one of the most popular methods, let me also tell you, but this was one of the methods that was practiced for a few plants. The water was purged with nitrogen to remove dissolved oxygen prior to the extraction. Deoxygenated water was used in an HPLC pump programmed for a constant flow of 1 to 3 ml per minute. A 10.4 ml extraction cell equipped with 0.5 meter frit at inlet and outlet was connected to 1 meter cooling loop in ice water outside of the oven. A pressure control valve was placed between the cooling loop and the collection vial. The extraction was carried out in efficient manner. So, this also actually was based on making liquefied water into a gaseous phase and then cooling it again to get the liquid. So, that is how it was made use for extraction. Now, comes the sonicator. Now, this is the machine which uses uh, the ultrasound energy and the ultrasound energy of 20 kilohertz uh, frequency at a wattage of about 50 can create agitation which can be very very good for extracting the colorant from the plant material. And this was for the first time used in our laboratory while we were working with some natural dyes. And how it started I will give you a small story. Because you know all new uh, inventions are accidental and this too was a uh, not a very planned uh, uh, ex uh, experiment, but we just wanted to see this because we were facing with the extraction of sapin wool by uh, conventional water extraction. And what would happen? The sapin wood wood shavings when they were heated for a prolonged time in water would instead of giving that bright magenta extract would get converted into a dull brown extract. Therefore, we understood that it is getting discolored because of prolonged heating. So, we first thought maybe heat is the culprit. So, we started trying to do with cooled water or not so hot water even then we face the same difficulty. So, it we understood that it is not heat alone, there is oxygen factor which is making this or uh, the prolonged uh, you know uh, contact with oxygen is actually causing this discoloration. Therefore, we then tried to put the plant material into the sonicator and quickly we uh, agitated for 5-10 minutes and all the color came into the solvent. Then we understood or into the water uh, layer and we understood that the fast method is the best method. So, we understood the use of sonicator for extraction and this was used for the first time in our laboratory for this purpose. Ultrasound assisted extraction. 
was carried out by mixing dried and ground sample in methanol or any other solvent in a flask which was then placed in the ultrasonic bath for 30 minutes. Actually, it did not even require 30 minutes, it was less than 30 minutes. At the beginning, the temperature of the extraction was between 20 to 40 degrees and after about 30 minutes, they, it uh, became because there is a localized heat that is generated. The extraction was repeated two, three times and the extracts were collected and evaporated on the rotary evaporator. Details of this method that was developed by us, I would like to share this because this is one of the most innovative technology, ultrasonication assisted extraction. Ideally, 20 gram of flour were mixed with 50 ml of uh, each solvent like one can use methanol or ethanol or ethyl acetate or acetone and sometimes even water. And in 100 ml conical flask, it is just taken up. The ultrasound chamber that is the machine that I showed you was a Julabo machine of the model USR3 having a frequency of 20 kilohertz using different sonic power between 100 to 500 watt for different time intervals that is 15 minutes to even 20, uh, 2 hours was um, used. The power level was set at the maximum level 9 and the temperature during the 1 to 2 hour extraction period was stabilized at 25 to 30 degrees during the extraction. For indirect sonication, the sample conical flask was immersed in an ultrasound chamber at half height of the solution of the flask operating at 20 kilohertz frequency. The temperature was controlled and maintained at below 30 degrees by periodically replacing water in the bath with cold one. That is, if cold water is added, then the temperature can be maintained because otherwise by continuous using of the ultrasound energy, the water gets a little heated up. The flask was taken out and cooled to room temperature by water. The flower extract were filtered through the Wattman number 42 filter paper and solution was collected. The residue was taken back and extracted again in the same conditions. The extracts of the twice extraction were mixed. The ultrasound power actually delivered to the extracting liquid by the sonic bath was determined by the calorimetric method. That means from one extraction to the next extraction, it was possible to see the color change and the intensifying of the color. Thus, this suggested that ultrasonication assisted extraction process is more selective than the conventional one and it is more effective also. It is also very good for temperature sensitive substrates. As I told you that accidental use for the, the sonicator with the wood, supper wood material led us to this important uh, uh, you know use of ultrasound. Otherwise, ultrasound was not used for this purpose earlier. So, therefore, the energy consumption is much lower in the case of uh, extraction. The efficiency of the extraction is much higher and not only that, the time consumed is much, much less and the cost of the machine is very optimal. It is not a very expensive machine like SCFE or for that matter subcritical water extractor. So, you see that this is an affordable machine, but if one compares with the sock slit machine, this extracting machine is much efficient. It can be done directly into the bath or it can be done, un, I mean uh, putting it in a conical flask and only utilizing the agitation uh, that is created by water in the uh, sonicator bath. So, both ways one can do it, one can have a choice of solvent, one can use any one of these solvents like methanol, ethanol, ethyl acetate, acetone or even water. So, you see there is a big flexibility just like Soxlate where one can use any 
solvent, here also one can use any solvent, here one can use it directly or indirectly. Then the third point is that it is very fast, it is very uh, you know uh, it saves a lot of energy because it is fast and lastly it is also fairly cheap. Therefore, extraction of dyes now can be uh, you know summarize that one can use soxalate method, one can use supercritical method, one can use subcritical water method or one can use sonicator method. But if I have to talk about extraction, then I will say that extraction of dyes are popularly done by two main solvents. Two types of extractions were carried out for characterization of colorant as well as analyzing the effect of newly found dyes resources on cotton, silk and wool. The extraction produced followed namely alcoholic extraction where dry leaves were finely crushed through a grinder and then subjected to succulate extraction using methanol as a solvent. The cycle is repeated for three times at 60 degrees centigrade. Then the cooled extract was filtered through a filter paper and solvent was removed through a rotary evaporator. Similarly, aqueous extraction. <coughs> Respective plant parts were taken and poured in boiling water and then kept on for water bath for 60 degrees uh, for about 1 hour and the extract of all the color was then um, seen in the water layer. Now, it, this is also filtered and then concentrated and the same procedure is carried out. But nevertheless, these, um, these are the two main solvent methods or choice of solvent alcoholic method or aqueous method for the extraction of dyes. So, if I have to now conclude, I will say that for extraction, one has to keep in mind that succulate is one of the methods, but a better method is by the use of ultrasound energy using a sonicator bath. And this was uh, found to be not only cheap, but had lot of flexibility and any and every plant could be extracted on sonicator.